All right, all right. Giving all praises, all honor to Yahweh and the son Yahweh Shai. This is the Shimmer with your bro Shai and this is my brother Gabar. How you doing today, brother? Man, I'm good, man. Every day above ground is a good day. That's that's what I'm talking about. Uh, today, the name of the lesson is called The Pressure of Traditional Holidays. You know, we got this, uh, we got this holiday coming up, uh, this uh, Valentine's Day thing coming up. And um, every year, you know, we, we fight against the pressures of holidays, right? So what the Most High put in my heart to bring to you guys is we're going to break down some scriptures and we're going to show you guys why it's important for us to keep our holidays instead of keeping the traditions of the heathen. Now, I got an announcement to make, okay? Um, on the month of April the 9th, we're doing a Passover. Me and my wife just left the building. We secured a building uh, in Garland for the Passover. Um, it's going to be April 9th, and it's going to be from the hours of 5.30 to 9.30. And we did it like that because we want everybody to get home safe. We're going we gonna to party for about four four or five hours together. Um, uh, it's going to be nice. We don't have the color scheme, but we're going to make a flyer. And it's going to be, and we're going to show the flyer and everything, but it's going to be, because we got the, we already paid for the building. It's going to be at 1701 Dairy Road in Garland. Okay. And that's for it, if it's just one person coming for single people, it'll be $30 uh, to attend for, for the whole family is $50 because we're going to have food. It's going to be a DJ. It's going to be really nice. So I'm just letting you know, brother, that you guys, you know, y'all welcome. You don't, you know, you don't even have to, I don't even really got to tell you cause you know what it is. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. But uh, that's in the, in the spirit of this class today of walking away from like traditional holidays, but we, but I want to show y'all something. We have to give the people who are in those holidays, we have to give them a way out. We have to give them something else. We can't say, well, man, you don't need to be celebrating no Valentine's Day and you're going to get your girl some a heart and some, and some and take out to eat and all that. If we're not doing those things, we have to be doing something else, y'all. And that's why I made that announcement that we'll, we are doing the Passover. Uh, we are doing new moons every uh, every month uh, for people who want to attend. And I want y'all to I want to encourage you guys to show or teach the people who are not in this truth, but they do just want to learn it. OK, because you can't get somebody out of something by telling them uh, or scoffing at them about what they're doing, because who what woman is going to be like not going to want to accept flowers or candy for whatever holiday. Right. They're going to want to accept these things. So in order. In, so the way that you lure people out of those ways, you got to do it with, with skill, with, with cunning. You can't just be like, Ugh, you know, uh, uh, you don't need to be doing that. Y'all niggas are wrong. <laughs> You can't do that. So the first uh, scripture today we're gonna go to is gonna be from in the in the in the book of Romans. We order the book of Romans, chapter fifteen, and we're gonna go to verse four, and we're gonna read that because we always have to give. Listen, you get you attract. What did your grandmother used to tell you when you was younger, baby? You attract more bees with honey than you do with lemons. <laughs> <laughs> and I never understood that until I got older, because I was like, why would a bee want a damn lemon? But to have a sour attitude is more repulsive than having a sweet or, or a nice disposition. And that's why we want, that's how we want to get these people in. That's why we want to teach these people these, these, these lousy statues. Okay. Go ahead and read that when you got it. You said Romans 15 and what? In verse four. Romans chapter 15, verse four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. He's saying that whatsoever things were written aforetime, meaning back in the day, everything that was written back in the day was written for us to learn from. Now, a lot of script, uh, Christians take this scripture. They don't even think about the scripture. They like, well, look, it, it's just something Paul said. No, Paul didn't just say something. Everything that we are learning now is meant to be understood. It's a foretime. Christ was teaching out of the Old Testament. Paul was teaching out of the Old Testament. Everything that we're learning now is meant for us to learn from back in the day. He didn't give them any other rules that he didn't give us. We just have to learn of what he's saying. Does that make sense? So we're going to we're going to jump over to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 20. And I'm going I'm to I'm I'm drive this little point home real quick before we get into it. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 20. 
Because we go, we have to get that understanding. Because how can we say, okay, we're we're doing this, we're doing that? We have to understand why we're doing these things, and we have to understand the Bible for what it is. If it's telling us that things that were written back in the day are written for our learning, what is it telling us? Because we got to learn from what it, what it's saying, right? So uh, watch this. My brother's gonna read it when he get to it. The Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter fourteen, verse twenty. And so the multitude, allured by the grace of the work, took him now for a God, which a little before was but honored as a man. Now this is a prophecy talking about Yahweh Shai, and it's telling you about the fakeness that's going to come in, the, the fake uh, uh, image of Caesar Borgia. But there's something else in this precept that, I want, that, that is applicable to what we're talking about. Read on. Verse 21. And this was an occasion to deceive the world for men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe unto stones and stocks the incommunicable name. This is this is the name that they use or the image that they use nowadays that we believe that this is the right Christianity. So this is the manner on the Christianity on how it started. But I want y'all to see now the next verse is the honey. I want y'all to see this real Real good. I want y'all to understand this. Now watch this. Read that. Verse 22. Moreover, this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of God. Stop right there. He said this is not enough. So this is talking about them changing the image of Yahweh Shai, changing the name of Yahweh Shai, right? Because in the 1500, his name changed. Now watch this. It said they erred in the knowledge of God. Why is this important to what we're talking about today? Because when you err from the knowledge of God, you're going to take on other things that you think that are OK. You're going to take on things that you think that are cool. Now, watch this. Read on. But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance. Wait a minute. They lived in the war of what? They lived in the great war of ignorance. We're living in a war of ignorance, meaning we're, we're bombarded with, with false information. Right. Watch this. Read Those on. great plagues called they peace. Stop right there. So this is what they, what we call peace. When we live in the war of ignorance, we think it's peaceful. When you say happy Valentine's Day, happy holidays, and you think it's peaceful, but it's a it's a problem because the Most High has a problem with these things. He has a problem with the with what we're celebrating. He has a problems with our traditions that we have adopted over time. Right? Read on. Verse 23, for whilst they slew their children in sacrifices or used secret ceremonies or made revelings of strange rites. Stop right there. Now, this is the part that's very difficult for people to get. It said they slew their children in they slew their children in, in sacrifices. It doesn't always mean that they're physically killing something. They're 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 burning them or slant a a slant a slewing them in traditions, because how hard it is for us to stop celebrating Valentine's Day. If 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 I was married to my last wife, if I came home on Valentine's Day and I didn't have a, a, a heart or a bear or have dinner reservations, we would probably be upset. We probably gonna get into an argument because I didn't remember the Valentine's Day. Now in this truth, we don't celebrate that, so there's no problem. But we get we get burned in the traditions. And then when things don't go our way, it shakes up our marriage. It shakes up our relationships. It shakes up things that we are that that we think, why are you tripping, baby? But we conform because <laughs> that's just we, we, we a lot of men get these gifts because they don't want no trouble. They don't want to fight. They don't want to argue. It ain't that they love. Uh, Valentine's Day. It ain't. It ain't that they love these days. They just want peace in their life. Is that right or wrong, brother? That's exact. Absolutely, positively. <laughs> we just want peace, and we don't want these things. Let's get. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter eighteen. I'm gonna show you guys something. Go to Deuteronomy chapter eighteen, and we're gonna show you why it's important not to do certain things. And, and I want you to start at verse. Um, I want you to start at verse. Not uh, 10. No, no. Uh, verse nine. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse nine, because it's going to show you why we're not supposed to keep those traditions of the other nations and why it's important, because it will make your marriage or your relationship uh, 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 feel like hell. 
Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. Go ahead. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. You see that? The other nations are doing abominable things according to God's will. They're not keeping the traditions of God. They're not keeping his, his, his holy days. They're not doing anything that the Most High God said because they were not given the law. So he's saying those people wasn't given the law, so you're not supposed to do their, abom their stuff. You're not supposed to celebrate the Chinese New Year. You're not supposed to celebrate, um, what is that, uh, the Day of the Dead, what they do, uh, like they do in Mexico. These are days that we're not supposed to do. And Valentine's Day follow up under those same traditions. Read on. Verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that use a divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. He said, there should not be anybody to make your child pass through the fire. Understand what he's saying. Passing through the fire is burning your child in a tradition. And it says, or uses divination or an observer of times. So when you observe these times, you're observing the times of who? The heathen. You're observing the times of these other nations. He said, don't do that. And a lot of times, that's why we went to uh, uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. It tells us everything that we read in the past is for us to learn from. When I show, if you show this, this precept to a person who doesn't understand the will of the most high, they'll be like, what you mean? I, I don't understand what you mean. It tells you right here, don't observe their times. It says, or the observer of times, or a consultant with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer that's talking to dead people, right? So we're not supposed to do these things. Go ahead and read the rest of that. Verse 12. For all that do these things. For some that do these things. For all that do these things. Okay. <laughs> an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Stop right there. He's telling you, he says, for all that do these things are abominable. If you're doing these traditions... If you're practicing these days that you think are nothing, these days are abominable, meaning something that the Most High God hates, right? To uh, to the 15,000th degree. We're not supposed to do them, right? <laughs> we can't do them. And, and so if we're not doing these things, there has to be something else. I want you to read the rest of that uh, verse 14. Verse 14. For these nations which thou shalt possess, Hearkened unto observers of times. Wait, wait, they did what? They hearkened unto observers of times. February 14th. Go ahead. And unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. So while you see other people celebrating those holidays, you're not to do it. If you see somebody doing, oh, we going out for Valentine's Day. He said, yeah, they're doing it. He said, but I have not suffered you to do these things. These are things that we're not suffered to do because we have our own days. That's why, That's why. like I said in the beginning, we're going to try to make it to where all of our people can come to our festivals that don't know how, that don't know what a Passover is. So we're trying to push that Passover day to our people that don't really know. Now, like my brother over here, he celebrated many Passovers. I've celebrated, I've been in the truth for six years, so I've celebrated six Passovers, Okay. But there are people that we need to be trying to help that haven't celebrated not one Passover and don't know. They think it's Easter Sunday. That's not what we're talking about. You understand? <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Passover of, of Christ, acknowledging what he did for us the whole nine. It ain't the same thing that you guys believe with an Easter bunny, a rabbit, or they'll say Happy Resurrection Sunday. Have you ever heard that term? That's, uh -huh. a, that's a new term that they have used because what they're doing is they're circumventing. They don't want to keep the law, but they'll say, well, happy. Well, we don't do no Easter bunny, no eggs. So happy resurrection Sunday. You're yeah. still off, brother. Yeah. So still off. Yeah. You're still off. Yeah. You, you, you're better than that's better than the bunny, but it's still not God. It's still not right. It's not right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. to keep our people destroyed, they'll keep doing things like this. If you notice, every few years they try to circumvent. They try to. They'll use a new term 
uh, woke church terms to try to make this thing work out for them. And, and y'all, listen, y'all got to come back to the most high God. You know what I'm saying? You got to come back in the right way. Uh, go to John chapter 10 and verse one. You got to come back to the, to the most high God. You can't do it the way you feel like you want to do it. And that's why we open up the doors for our brothers and sisters to, to learn uh, like, like the way that the Bible says for us to learn. Right now, let's get it out the mouth of Christ. The gospel of John chapter 10, verse one. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enter, entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a liar. Wait a, a minute. Robert, excuse me. Wait a minute. He said, if you enter in the sheepfold and try to come through some other door, he said, you're a robber, you're a thief and a robber. So when you say happy resurrection Sunday, that's not correct either. Right. If you say, and a lot of times, I'm going to tell you something, brother, they've gotten slick with Valentine's Day. They've got, they don't call it that no more. A lot oh, of people man. say a, a happy love day. Oh, man, I haven't heard that one. Yeah, they, bro, listen, they have tried, they're trying to go another way because people are realizing that these holidays, listen, just because we in this truth doesn't mean that other people don't see something wrong with these other days. Mm -hmm. We We got, we have... Seven Day Adventists, we got Jehovah's Witnesses, we got the woke church. These people, they traditionally don't celebrate those days, but they don't really know why, but they'll try to call them other things. They'll say Love Day or 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 fellowship or what do they call it? Um couples day. Right. You know, they'll say these things and, and, and it's really celebrating Valentine's Day, but they're trying to um circumvent, they're trying to make it fit. They're trying to make it be something else. But in the truth, it's the same thing because you, you make rev reservations for the 14th. You go out on the 14th, you get her flowers, you get her candy. You're doing the same thing. You're just putting it under another name. Mm -hmm. You see that? And he's telling you not to do it. He said, don't keep And That's why he told us in, in chapter 18 of, of Deuteronomy, he says, don't be a keeper of times. What times is he referring to? He's talking about the heathen times, their, their traditions. He said, don't keep them. So you can name it what you want to, but it's still the same type of sin to, to the most high God, right? And uh, uh, read verse two, I'm sorry. Verse two, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. What is the door? The door is the following the right path, doing as he commands you, saying, just trying to Hold as closely to the commandments as you can. Go ahead. Verse three. To him, the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. So once you understand what it is you're supposed to be doing, you, you hear the voice of the Most High God. The voice of the Most High God are the words that are in the Bible. The, the, the commandments that we read every single uh, Monday, Every single Sabbath day, we're reading out of the book of the law. This is the voice of God, you guys. This is what he calls the my voice or or his food, right? And we're going to get that. I, I want you to go uh, real quick. I want you to go, and I, I already had it written down, but I'm going to jump over and I'm going to go there. Um, go to, go to uh, Matthew 4 and 4 real quick. Because we're supposed to listen to what the most high God is telling us to do. You know, and, and we're getting it through what, by way of Christ. That's why we're quoting a lot of what Yahweh Shai said, because we're supposed to be followers of Christ. Right. And if we're going to follow him, we got to do what he said. Now, listen to what he said here. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter four, verse four. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. This is when he was tempted by the devil. The devil tried to tempt him. He said, no, man should not live by bread alone. He tried to give him some, talk, tell him to turn those stones into, 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 into bread for him to eat after he was fasting 40 days. He said, no, man should not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Where can you find the mouth of God? This Bible, you guys. It says you have to, you have to look in this Bible and find what the Most High wants you to do. And that's how you're going to live because that's the word of God. Right. 
And we have to stick to those traditions. But over time, the heathen has brought in other traditions. And just like dummies, we just follow after them. And I'm not going to even say dummies because when you don't know better, you just don't know better. So I'm just going to say in ignorance, in ignorance, we follow him. We follow the, 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 the wicked one in ignorance. Right. And that's what Satan was trying to get Christ to do was follow him. But he knew better. So he so he gave you this quote in Matthew four and four. Right. Go to uh, go to uh, uh, to uh, Romans chapter one and verse twenty five. Chapter one and verse 25 in the book of Romans. The book of Romans, chapter one, verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who did what? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Read. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. When we do the other traditions, we're serving the creature more than the creator. Yeah, we are. We're giving homage to something that we really don't know much about. More than doing what the most high God is telling us to do. And we have to come out of those ways. We have to stop doing that which is against our father, that which is against our highest power, the most high Yahweh, right? And so that's why the question was posed here uh, in chapter one of Romans. Paul's like, who, who did this? Who, who, who turned the truth? meaning the laws of God into something false. Because when we ask people to keep the high holy days, keep the statues with us or, or come and do the Sabbath, they look at it as they look at it and be like, oh, we don't ugh, we don't want to do that. What, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? Passover? What, 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 do you, what do you mean? New moon? We look at we we it's a bad taste in our mouth initially because. Light don't really deal with darkness. Darkness don't want nothing to do with light. It tastes bad to if you in darkness and you taste that light and you're not ready for it, it's the worst taste you ever had. But if the most high open your eyes up to receive him or to receive the holidays and, and the holy days that he has for us, it's the sweetest, it, it's sweetest honey. It's the best thing that you ever thought you could do. You know, I give all homage and praise to my wife because my wife is a planner. And, and so she'll come to me and she'll say, well, we got to do this date. And it, how, does this date work for you or this? And, and, and it's just easy, man. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy for us. We just work out a date because my wife loves doing these things, you know? And, and for me, I, I prayed for somebody to, to come into my life uh, like that. Hell, that's my Valentine's Day gift every day by just having a woman who wants to keep the law, statutes and commandments and, Hell, I bought my wife. I bought my wife flowers just on a random day. You don't need to. Uh, and now when you go to Tom Thumb, they got nothing but flowers and roses and all this stuff, bro. You can come home from work and bring your wife flowers any day. I bring my my wife love lilies. I bring my wife flowers just because it's, it shouldn't be a designated day that somebody says, "Hey, man, this day you need to pick out to bring your wife to who." Ain't nobody finna tell me when to bring my wife some flowers. I bring my wife flowers when I damn well feel like it. Yeah, right. And, and that's how we function with each other. But we're so we're so robotic now in the society. And what we're trying to do, what me and my brother's trying to do, is trying to help our brothers and sisters to get out of that routine, get out of that machine, you know, get out of that matrix of, of, of people telling you what to do, when to do it. You know, uh, you can give your wife a, a gift. At any time, and she can get flowers. And, and same thing to you, uh, sisters. Y'all can do the same thing for y'all husbands or for y'all children at any time. You know, get out of that robotic uh, system of thinking, man. And you know what? To really, when you really think about it, it's preferred that it not that it doesn't have to be for a special day. That's right. Because it's now, more you, special. now you're, doing, not, it for, you're doing it for the day. You're not doing it for me. You didn't buy this for me. You bought it because today is the day that everyone is doing this. That's right. It don't have nothing to do with your thought or consideration for mm -hmm. me. It's because, oh, well, you heard your homegirl or you heard the homeboy say that they're going to buy their significant other this or they're going to do this or that. And so you say, oh, you know what? Yeah, let me go. Let me go do something, too. As opposed yeah. to you feel like I love him or I love her. I adore this person. This person means the world to me. You know what would put a smile on their face? Let me go get these flowers. Why, mm -hmm. why February? Why, why in February you got to feel like that? Exactly. Why not, uh, why not any other day or any other month of the year? 
you take a one you take a one day holiday and turn it into something, and that makes it disingenuous. That's all. Right. No, that's right. You know, and, and we have to remember <laughs> these things, but we have to remember why it's important to pull out of these days, to pull out of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because the friendship of the world it gets you, it, it'll get you the wrong situation, the wrong stuff. The friendship of the world will get you the things that you really don't want. It's going to cause you to have turmoil in your relationships, believe it or not. You know, y'all think just because you had a successful date on the on the 14th or whatever. Oh, yes, it's cool. But when it, when it rolls around again, I'll never forget. I remember years ago when I was married to my ex and I'm always going to bring this type of stuff up because this is what I'm this is the only way I can give you guys examples. Um, I didn't get my ex. Uh, I didn't get her something for her birthday. I came home and she thought it was going to be great. And I just didn't. And it was this big, bro. It was this big argument. Like we just, we damn near got a divorce. And I go to CVS and I got some perfume and some other bull crap that I didn't really mean just to make it cool, just to make it because I forgot. Mm -hmm. And we damn near fell out. I damn near was sleeping on the couch. And I thought to myself, damn, this is so, this, it didn't feel good to me. It felt so oh. fish. Yeah. It felt. Yeah. It was so superficial, bro. Yeah. It wasn't genuine. And even yeah. when I got the stuff, when I went to the place to buy the stuff, I still, I was just doing it to have peace in my house. I wasn't doing it because I cared. You see that? And, and you don't want to, you don't want to create a dialogue like that because what you do is you're sowing falseness to your relationship. You're sowing falseness to your children, making them feel like that me getting you something equates to love or me making a reservation on a certain date equates to love. And that's not what it is. You know, that's why these days should be designated to the most high that he designate for us, that he that we're going to celebrate on on the days that he ordains for us. Because guess what? When I come with, in, with my wife on the Passover, on the new moon, we're coming together in the love of the most high. We love the most high together. So this is not a day that's about me or about her. We, we know that the most high is designating these days and we're going together because we love each other. Right. And we're giving the most high God his due love, his due homage, his due praise together. Y'all see, the, I'm, I'm trying to explain the difference between me doing something just to keep peace in my house and us coming together, doing something and giving it to the most high because we love it. Those are two different animals, y'all. Those are completely different. And, and let's let's go to the scripture and show you guys why we do these things. Cause they said, well, why, why do you, why do you see, keep these holidays? Let's go to the scripture and let's get it. I want you to go to chapter 33 of the book of Sirach, chapter 33, verse one. And we're going to read, and this, this is a very important scripture. So we're going to read from, we're going to read from verse one to nine. Chapter, the book of Sirach, chapter 33, verse one, there shall no evil happen unto him that feared the Lord. But in temptation, even again, he will deliver him. You see that? So when you fear God or respect God, you're not going to get as much evil in your household. You're not going to get evil in your relationship. Because if we're coming together to keep the laws of God together in love or keep a holiday of God in love, we ain't got to. I don't have no pressure on me. I don't feel no pressure to have to impress her or to have to give her something so she'll be nice. Go ahead. A wise man hateth not the law. But he that is a hypocrite therein is a is as a ship in a storm. You see that? So if you wise, he said, you're not going to hate the law. But the ones that are hypocrites, because it is hypocritical. And I want you to know this. When I was given those gifts just to keep peace in my house, that's hypocritical. Yeah. yeah. That made me a hypocrite. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I wasn't doing it out of sincerity. I was doing it to just shut just so you could shut the hell up. Go ahead. A man un of understanding trusteth in the law, and the law is faithful unto him as an oracle. You see that? If you have understanding, you are faithful unto the law. So I'm going to keep doing these holidays day after, I mean, week after week, month after month. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Verse 4. Prepare what to say, and so thou shalt be heard, and bind up instruction, and then make answer. That's very self-explanatory. Prepare what to say. And then he said, bind up instruction and then make answer. So once you understand how to do something, you execute it. Like, like what we're doing right here, we're reading what the Most High God wants from us. When we're done with this class, guess what we're going to do? We're going to execute it. 
Go ahead. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel, and his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. A stallion, a stallion horse is as a mocking friend. He nayeth under everyone that sitteth upon him. Why does one day excel another? Now, this when is the honey. This is the honey, y'all. Go ahead. <laughs> Why does one day excel another when as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun? So he's asking the question, why does one day excel another? Why is one day more important than the other day? This goes into your holidays, y'all. This goes into, into our feast days, y'all. So this is for y'all's pagan days, and this goes into the days we celebrate of the Lord. Now watch this. Verse 8. By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished. And he all the seasons. By the and knowledge of who? By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished. And he altered seasons and feasts. You see that? So the days that we keep or the high holy days are distinguished by the knowledge of the most high God. That's why we keep the days. So the days that you guys are keeping, February, December, uh, November, birthdays, those are not distinguished by the knowledge of the most high. But go ahead. Verse nine. Some of them have he made high days and hollowed them. And some of them have he made ordinary days. So we do have some days that are ordinary days and we have other days that are high, holy days. If you want to get these days, you can go to um, Leviticus chapter 23 and it'll give you a list of high, holy days that we celebrate. It'll give you a long list of high, holy days that are important to us, that are important to the most high God. Right. Read on. Oh, no, no. That's that's it. That's all I want on that. Just to verse nine. Because that's that was the honey right there. That's what we needed to get. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was. <laughs> that's what we needed to get. You know, I, I want you to go to First Thessalonians chapter four and verse one real quick. First Thess chapter four and verse one. The book of First Thessalonians, chapter four, verse one. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so you would, so you would abound more and more. So he's telling us we have to, we need to walk a certain way. We need to carry ourselves a certain way if we want to please the Most High. Uh, more and more, he said, abound more and more. That's get, gaining knowledge day after day after day. We have to understand how to please God. There's a certain way he wants us to worship him. Mm -hmm. So we can't just do it by doing the things that we want to do. We can't do it by keeping pagan, pagan customs and doing it like we want to do it. We need to learn how he wants us to do it. Read verse two. Verse two. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. So he's telling you the will of God is that we should abstain from fornication. Now, what is that going into? This is going into not just physical fornication, but it goes into spiritual fornication as well. A form of spiritual fornication is keeping a, 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 a pagan custom that is not your own. Yes, sir. That is a form of what? Spiritual fornication. And this is what people don't believe. This is what people don't. This is the thing that disconnect us uh, from the most high God, because we won't accept what spiritual fornication is. But read the next verse. <clears throat> verse four, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. So what is that saying? You we need to know how to possess our, our vessel, meaning our bodies. In sanctification, meaning in separateness or in living separate from those who are doing other things and honor. What is that honor talking about? Respecting yourself. So a way that me and my brother here respect ourselves, we don't give in to customs of, of the heathen. We don't give in to those days. There, there's no day that he's going to that my brother over here is going to come home and his woman is going to say, why you didn't get me nothing for Valentine's Day? Why you didn't get me a present for this? There's not one day. That even if somebody told me that, I wouldn't believe it. If you say, no, the bar man, his woman got on him because, I, brother, I don't believe that. I would never believe it because we don't carry, that's not how we live our lives. So, Because we know how to possess our own vessel in sanctification and in honor. 
Th these are ways that I'm, I'm throwing these examples out there because these are ways that we're possessing ourselves or respecting ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And we have to continue to do that. You got every, anything, brother? No, you on fire. <laughs> All praises to the most high. Now, I want you to go to Baruch. Uh, matter of fact, before you go there, I'm going to show you why this is important. I want to go. I want you to go to uh, Second uh, Edris chapter three and verse thirty-four. Second Edris chapter three and verse thirty-four. Let me show you why this is this is important because we got to know that we Israel. This is why we keep these uh, these holidays so sacred. Why we why we try to help people observe this because number one, we believe that we are Israel. That's number one. And a lot of people in the so-called woke church or in the or in the, or the living their lives in Christianity, they don't believe that they're Israel. Because if you believe that you was Israel, there are a lot of things that you would not be doing. There are a multitude of things that you would not be doing if you understood that you were Israel and yeah. you can't get down like other nations. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Second Ezra chapter three, verse thirty-four. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and theirs also that dwell in the world. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. You see that? So he's making a distinction. He said, weigh everything in the balance. He said, and everybody else's stuff too. He said, but you're going to see that the name or that God's grace is found nowhere else but in Israel. Read on. Verse 35. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments? So what? when has the heathen not uh, uh, offended the Most High God? When has the heathen been keeping his commandments? Right? They got traditions that date all the way back. And, and a lot of people say, man, y'all y'all just hate white folks. We don't just hate. We don't we don't hate anybody. We, we love what God loves and we hate what he hates. And, and let me show y'all something. Those Africans were doing just as much abominable stuff as those uh, Chinese people and those Japanese people and those white folks. Those real Africans, they drank cow blood, bro. Not only do they sleep on doo-doo pillows, we're talking about them Africans, them, them, so, them real, the ones that they, the whites of their eyes are brown. They got them big old water jug heads. We're talking about them. They, they poke uh, cows and they drank cow's blood. We can't do such things. We can't do the things that the other nations do. And he's saying, when were the other nations keeping his laws? The answer is never. Watch this. Read the rest of that. Verse 36. Thou shalt find that Israel by yeah, name, knew. that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathen but not the who but not the heathen so you're going to find that what's going to make us distinctive is that we have kept the precepts and it's up to us to come back to his laws that's what makes us different so when you don't believe that you israel you're going to behave as the other nations you're going to do what they do because you're going to be like well you know we, we you know it's all good you know god know my heart uh, it's different no we're israelites we have to conduct ourselves in a whole different type of way than everybody else. We're not to do the things that the heathens do. And that includes keeping their holidays. We don't do that. Go to uh, go to Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. Watch this. We don't do that, man. We don't keep their holidays. We let them do it. We let we're gonna let them do them, and we're gonna do us, those of us that call ourselves Israel. We're going to do us and we're going to teach our people who don't know any better to do it, to do like us. The book of Baruch, chapter four, verse one. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. Well, how long? Forever. So we know that the laws of God don't never stop. They're going to endure forever. Go on. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So we know what's the consequences for, for Israel walking away from the, the law. We know we've been punished for going away from the law. We know we're under the curses because why? We're not keeping the law. Go on. Verse 2. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. 
Why is he saying turn the O Jacob? Jacob is the 12 tribes. He's talking to a nation, not a man, right? He's talking to a whole group of people that don't know who the hell that they are. What did Christ say in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24? He said, he, and he answered and said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. So let me put it in layman's terms for y'all. I'm not sent but to the lost niggas who don't know who they are. <laughs> that's who. That's what he's saying. But he said lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? And that's where we're trying to get our people to understand y'all are Israel. Y'all need to wake up. Read, read the next verse. Now watch this. And this is going to be a separation here. Verse three, give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. Now, bro, let, let me ask you a question. When is that precept not applicable? Oh, it's always applicable. What, so <laughs> if he's telling you don't give it to a strange nation, what are you supposed to do? This covenant belongs to Israel. We're supposed to wake up who? Israelites. We're supposed to talk to who? Our people who don't know who they are. That's why we're going so hard to try to let you guys know, bro, we got a Passover coming up. Y'all are invited. This is the price. This is the date. We got a color scheme too. Because <laughs> you know how brothers like to, like to look clean. We're going to have a color scheme too <laughs> for you guys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Go to... Um, Oh, go to Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. We're going to get that in there too. Isaiah chapter 34 and 16. Yeah, we're going to get that one in too. Wait, can I get verse 4 out of that? Absolutely. Um, verse 4, this is the book of Baruch chapter 4 and verse 4, which is goes perfectly with what we were talking about. Oh, Israel, happy are we for things that are pleasing to Yahweh are made known unto us. So just when you deal with, you'll never find where the Most High said, you know what? On the second month of the year, go out and buy hearts and dress in red and pink and chocolates and roses. You'll never find that. <laughs> You're never going to find that. What's another holiday? What's another folly day coming up? What is it? Easter? I think Easter's coming up, right? Yeah. Easter's like you're never gonna find you're not gonna find Easter as you know it in the Bible. Okay, yeah. because when, even when you do see the word Easter in the Bible, it's referring to Passover. Right. And so when it says, Oh Israel, happy are we for the things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. The things that are pleasing to God. Like his, like his high holy days recorded as the brother explained to you in the, in the book of Leviticus. That's right. These are the Amen. things that are pleasing to him. These are the things that he says, you know what, this is what I want you to do. And when you read in the scripture, you'll find where he says stuff like, you know, and, you'll, and uh, you'll eat it and his spirit will be in the midst of you. In the midst of you mean he's going to be amongst you. He's going to be with you. And so he's not going to be with you. He's not in the midst of you. He's not around you. He's not even dealing with you when you deal with these other uh, holidays, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, and on, on down the line. He has his own holidays that he prefers for us to deal with. And these are the things that are pleasing to him. And when you do those things in righteousness and with love and sincerity, because you want to make God happy and not your spouse happy, because you want to make God happy and not your children happy, guess what? Now God is with you. That's right. My children love the holy days. My my youngest daughter is so happy that once a month we got a new moon. And she tell her friends at school, I got a holiday once a month. <laughs> they don't even understand what, what that means. Like, what do you mean you have a holiday once a month? She's like, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> we, we celebrate the holiday once a month. My oh, children man. love Passover from the time that they've been, from the time that they've been old enough to really understand that that it's a holiday they love passover you know what i mean they love it they they love the, the, what it's about they love of course they love to eat and hang out but they love they understand what it's about and it means something to them it means something yep so this is what it's saying when it says that the things that are pleasing to god are made known unto us those yep. things are recorded in these scriptures you yep. don't got to go nowhere else to get that get what's pleasing to god right out the book that's all i had I 
Man, that's a bro. That's excellent. And I'm glad you brought that out because that's what that's our purpose for doing this to let our people know that the things that are pleasing to him are made known to us. So because these things are made known to us, me and my brother are coming out here to talk to y'all about these things, to let y'all know, like, man, y'all don't got to celebrate them days no more, you know? And yeah, your, your woman would be upset if she, if she's not in the know or, or not in the, 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 the truth of understanding, she'll be mad at first. But when you tell her, no, baby, look, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start doing this, doing that. If she really loves you, she'll stay. She'll be there, you know. But if she just really is selfish and really don't, the most high is taking somebody out of your life anyway that don't need to be there. Just to let you guys know, you know, and a lot of us, that's the listen, that's the hardest thing for a lot of us men. We like, man, man, me and my girl been through a bunch of stuff. You will know if a person really love you or not. When you get in this truth, the person that you're going to know if she love you. You gonna really know, and that's I think a lot of us, brother, are afraid to find that out. Yeah, you, you understand sure. what I'm saying? Yeah, I, know, I do for sure. <laughs> We're afraid to find because we getting what we want right now. Yeah. You know, they giving it to us like we want. They eating, they cooking what we like to, to eat. They giving us the things we want, and yeah. it's very comfortable. It's good, yeah, it's good. But you don't, you'll know if that woman really, really love you if you once you get in this truth, especially if you go in this truth with a wife. They, you going to know a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of stuff. Let me tell you, bro. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I want you to go to uh, go to uh, uh, the book of Revelations, chapter 18, in verse um, 4. Eighteen and 4? Uh-huh. Revelation. Yes, sir. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. For her you sins see. have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. You see that? It says, I heard a voice from heaven that said, come out of her, my people. What is this talking about? This is talking about us leaving the ways, the traditions, the 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 ordinances of the heathen yeah. and coming into the most highs, like come out of her. Stop doing whatever she's doing, whatever this nation and country is doing. Don't do don't it. Do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Of my people and be not partaker of that, her sins, because he's telling us everyone who's doing the traditions of the of the of babylon of this babylon is going to get exactly what everyone else is going the same judgment that's coming to them is coming to you if you're caught in their traditions yeah. if you're caught doing what they do you're going to get what they get too out of that's a rap lyric ain't it? out of start rapping right <laughs> because we have to stop we have to come out of those ways Go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 35. Chapter 31 and verse 35. We got to come up out those ways, y'all. The book of Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea, when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. Stop right there. He's telling him, he's telling us he is the one who giveth all these things. He is the one who decide these days for us. He gives us the days, so we ought to let him do his job, and we need to work on doing what? Our job. Read the next verse. Verse 36. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord. Then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So watch this. He's telling us if the ordinance that he gave us from the beginning, these days, he said, if they part, he said, then I'll break up Israel. Guess what? He's not going to do it. Read the next verse. He's not ever going to do that. Watch this. Verse 37. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they that, that they have done, saith the Lord. It's impossible to measure heaven. It's impossible to 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 
to understand the foundations of the world. We got people that think the earth is flat, think the earth is round, so we know it can't be measured. We know that everything that we're dealing with is a hypothesis concerning their science. So that has not been done yet. So you know that Israel's still intact. Yes, Israel is a people who don't know who they are, but the most high ordinances will never change is what he's telling us. It's not going to go. It's not going to ever change. And so that's why we have to start keeping these laws. Jump to uh, Jeremiah chapter 11 and verse one. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 1. The word of the Lord, Salaki, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He's talking to the, all the 12 tribes. Go ahead. And say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. The words of the covenant involve our statutes, which are his high holy days. Go ahead. Um, which I commanded you, so like it, which I commanded your fathers in that day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, obey my voice and do them according to all which I command you. So shall ye be my people and I will be your God. He's, you see that? Now, the iron furnace, is, he's telling us that we were in Egypt. That's what he called the iron furnace. He brought us out of those traditions. He brought us out of those customs. Now, the people did not want to hear it. The people were hard headed and they kept doing the wrong stuff. But he still took us out of those traditions. And I believe that he showed us the, the things that he showed us that the children of Israel went through at that time was to show us how hard it was going to be to come out of these traditions of today. Because they kept going. They heard the voice of God and they still didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to listen. They wanted their same traditions. They seen uh, uh, the sea open up and swallow up Pharaoh's soldiers. They seen a chariot in the sky that they were following because it was a it was a fire at night that they followed in the sky. And it was a cloud in the daytime that they followed in the daytime. They seen these things. And they still did not want to do what the most high wanted them to do. So my thing to you guys is how hard do you think it is for people that are waking up to themselves? How hard do you think it's going to be for these people to, to hear? Because those people knew who they were. They all it was all 12 tribes. They knew nigga, I'm Neftali. I'm, yeah. I'm Judah. You know, I'm Zebulun. They knew these things. Yeah. But we. We don't know. Like, I'm telling you, I'm Judah, because the Bible says that the inhabitants of Judah will rise first. So according to the Bible, I'm either Levi, uh, Benjamin or Judah. But all three of those tribes make up Judah. Right. So I'm telling you who I am because I'm one of the first to wake up and go do this thing. And the Bible is not a, a book that, that it should. The Bible says God is not a man that he shall lie. So that's why I'm telling everybody that can that will listen to me, I'm a Judite. And I, I may be a Levite. I may wake up and they, oh, yeah, nigga, you a Levite. Thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> but I feel, <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm one of them because of what the Most High has done in my life. You know, so we have to start doing these things. And, and it's going to be hard. And people are going to not want to listen. I had a brother of mine, and I hope he's listening. I hope he watches it later. A brother of mine asked me today, he called me and he asked me if we were keeping the Passover uh, and I was going to get, I, I told him, I'm going to call you back with all the information. And when I told him, yeah, my brother, and I hope I'm not embarrassing him, but he started crying because he was like, man, I just want to keep the laws and I just want to, and, and my heart went out to him. I was like, man, you ain't got to, listen, you ain't got to, you, you ain't, you can, you barely have to ask me. All you got to do is get the address. If, if you, or trying to keep the laws, I'm here for you. And we was on the phone talking. I was like, man, I love you, brother. And he's man, thank you, brother. I love you too. And I thought to myself, man, why, why is it this hard for people to come together? Because he started telling me all the things that are going on in Israel and, and what he's seeing and things he didn't like. I'm like, bro, it's, it's, it shouldn't be this hard to keep these laws, man. And we got to have more people that's doing this thing like what me and my wife are trying to do to have people like him so they'll have a place to go. So if they just want to simply keep the law and just keep Passover 
and go about their way, they can do that. And we need, bro, we we need more of this, man. Yeah. We need more of this. And I hope, man, I, I hope that you guys give thought to joining us on this uh, Passover that's happening in April, bro, because we're going to try to make it. We gonna we got a DJ. We're going to try to make it nice. <laughs> We gonna, I'm telling you, we're going to try to make it real nice for people and, and, and for everybody, whoever listening, man, if y'all got people out there that just may be just a little interested, that don't even know nothing about no Passover and right. they want to come, right. bro, tell them about it. Tell them, try to wait. Listen, as much as y'all say that y'all Israelites, y'all have to remember something. Y'all can't get out of this without the people, without going to the people. Nigga, y'all can't get out of this. We can't. The most high told he said what he said. We went into this thing as a people. Guess what? We coming out of this thing as a people. So for all you individual lights out there, and I'm not saying you got to be in no camp because I'm not in the camp, but I'm saying you have to show love and try to teach those people who want to learn. You got to do that. You know, and a lot of people, a lot of us, we if you if we're in a situation of a congregation, we'll go out and teach to the masses. But when it comes to keeping uh, holy days or, or teaching a person, we won't teach them unless they part of our congregation. Hmm. I'm not going to do that. You can come in, into my barbershop every Saturday at 12 o'clock. If you come once or twice, it's there for you. And if you leave and if you say, I don't want to do this no more, that's on you. But if you come, you're not hooked into nothing, bro. <laughs> if I, if, I'm going to treat you just like I've been treating everybody else. Cause I don't have a congregation. I damn sure ain't got no heaven or no hell to put you in. <laughs> but but we we gonna treat everybody the same way that come together, and we want you to fellowship. We want your fellowship, okay. and I want everybody that can hear this to understand that we're not. I'm not trying to create no uh, congregation of a camp or anything like that. I'm trying to create brotherhood, and I'm trying to help brothers that want to hold themselves accountable to keep these laws, because that's what it's about. That's what I was taught. You know, right. when you on the street corner, you talking to people, a lot of people feel pressured to be a part of an organization that they may not be ready to be in. Look, I ain't got no place to put you, bro. All I'm going to do is teach you to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments and get your own house in order. That's what I'm here to teach you to do. You know, and I don't believe that if you don't, if you don't come back and visit me, and, oh, that nigga out the truth, that, bro, it may catch you a year or from now, two years from now. Yep. I may have just planted, he just probably meant for me to plant the seed. Hey, God. So I, it's not about me having a, a, a being a part of an organization as much as it, is, as it is for Israel to start gathering and loving on each other and trying to show and teach each other. You know, because think about it. Think about how many churches are on the street corners right. in South Dallas, in Oak Cliff, right. in yeah. Bonton. Think about all the churches that are there. And we trying to build this nation or build up our people. We need to create more space for yeah. our people to be able to come to. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. We, we got to create that space and give them a, a way out. Give them a way not to have to keep those holidays. Give them a place they can come with no pressure, no equivocation. And you can just keep the law and then you can just go on your merry way, bro. And that's what we're here for. You got anything to add to that, brother? Nope. You know what I tell you? You're on fire. Because <laughs> that's what we're here for, bro. You know, but that's all I got today. You know, that's the class. I hope you guys got some pretty good precepts. I hope you um, got something out of it, too, brother. I hope. <laughs> now that was fire, right? All praises to the most high. No and, and as always, man, we give the most high and the son, Yahweh Shai, all the glory, all the praises, all the honor. And we want to keep on teaching and, and, and bringing this 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 uh, truth to all our people. And with that, I say shalom. Shalom, big bro. Already, bro. Already. <laughs> <laughs>